All right, guys, let's learn how to play This One's For You by Kate Dutton. Uh, first of all, go to katedutton.com and purchase the WAV file and sheet music from her. I think it costs you 10 bucks. Uh, important for two reasons. One is it's a little easier to just to have the sheet music here for reference. Um, even if you're not like the best reader in the world, um, it can kind of help zero in on some of the chords. It helped me. Uh, two is it's important to support the artists whose work you believe in. And if you're here right now, that means that this piece meant enough to you that you wanted to try to learn it. So toss Kate 10 bucks and now let's get started. All right, <clears throat> this song is in the key of B flat. Two flats there. And the opening little figure here has uh, the first challenge of the song. And also there's a little workaround, which I'll show you right now. Uh, it goes like this in the right hand. And why that's difficult is if you can see my contorted <laughs> And uh, <clears throat> is that it requires all five fingers, and that um, spacing is not like entirely comfortable on your hand. So uh, the way that she does it, and the way that I've managed to do it, is right, like that. Uh, if this is hard for you and your hands are smaller, there's a workaround here, which is to just not play the G, and in that case, the fingering would be like this. I'll do that one more time. It's not as rich a chord versus, but it's almost as good and it doesn't matter. Music is about just doing it the way that you're able to do it. And if you need to take a note out, that's just uh, economy. So don't be afraid to do that. There's the first hurdle we've surmounted, so onward. So it just walks down from the E. There's this uh, pretty easy figure to do, um, which is kind of a B flat sus chord with a B flat with a D in the bass. So it's the first inversion, uh, a little dork, dork moment there for you. And then it walks down to a, a C minor seven. This first beautiful moment. There's just two notes that she pictures she depicts that whole chord that's all over the place in this song and that's why it, it makes it so beautiful it's just like all of the notes that she leaves in and all the notes that she takes out a lot of powerful choices there so here we are uh going down two three and then there's the first big figure here and uh, this is how you do it it goes like this right um, I played that a million times and I got it. It's all muscle memory. So if it doesn't come first, this is what practicing is about. So <clears throat> it's a triplet and you want to start, you play the first note of that triplet in your left hand on the C, right? And you're going to go like this. <laughs> Forgive my uh, errors there. Let's do it one more time. <clears throat> And she uh, puts three notes in the left hand. So there's a D, there's an F, and there's a B flat. And it would be easy to just play those on the downbeat, but that's not what keeps it interesting. So Kate doesn't do that. So let's do what she does. So I'm gonna show you what she does, which is this. Right? This is one moment where it's kind of nice to have the sheet music because you can kind of see where the, the left hand falls. And uh, I did a combination of looking and listening. Maybe that will be helpful for you. All right, so we're gonna move forward from there. I'm gonna do it one more time. And then right quickly, she jumps into back into the figure. I didn't do the fingering right. Which is a little tricky because it happens fast and she just touches that D. It's like almost a ghost note, it's barely there. And there's tons of that all throughout this song. There's notes that are hit and notes that are barely hit. And the sheet music can't really tell the difference. So um, that's why you kind of got to listen and look if you're a reader. Okay. So she does. We're 
back into that early figure. So she repeats the phrase basically with a variation. Uh, so it's gonna go do do da 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 da. And there's this nice suspended feeling chord that's kind of halfway between B flat and F, and there's a lot of that in this chord too. And then there's this little figure here. And what she does is what goes. And I'm not going to try to show you how to do that because um, it takes, it's one of those things that you uh, have to really dial in. The fingering is very specific and <laughs> I have a limited amount of time. So <clears throat> this is what's doable too. And this is more accessible to y'all. So it's going to be an F7 uh, as defined by just the F and the 7 here. And the rest of it is it just I'm just playing a B flat because that's the highest note of the figure so I consider that the melody and then otherwise I'm just playing a five and a one of F to keep it very open sounding and also nice and easy to play so here we go that's what that's what I'm doing that's what I do in the performance video that's there nice and easy So what's happening right there is an F7, right? And then F sharp diminished seven, uh, which happens a couple more times in, in the song, really beautiful, to a G minor seven, which it would be the six of this chord progression. Um, the chord progression is very simple, uh, compositionally speaking, but simple is best, right? So here we are. Da, 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 da. So what's going on right there? In the right hand, you're gonna get F, F, new another inversion of F, B flat, walk down to the, which is uh, kind of a one and five of B flat, but really it's also doubling as a sus of C7, which it resolves to. Ugh, so, <laughs> uh, chill out, Lanker. So, um, let's see here, Ridge. And then those, there's these stabs that are kind of like, jack, 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 jack. Um, I'm not going to try to break that down. It's kind of a, a feel thing. And um, you could, but it is helpful to look at the sheet music if that's helpful to you. If you're not that kind of person, that's fine. Just listen to what she does and go like this, count it out. Da -ga 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 -ga. Da -ga 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 -ga. That's what I did too. So that's what she's doing. C7, and then this is kind of a nice little figure. It's going to go up to a uh, E flat. That's what the chord is, but it's going to be all suspended, and I'll show you. So, so this is just like a cool little uh, figure. So that's uh, going to E flat. Seven, and then to E flat minor seven, which happens all over the place in music. When we're in the four chord of the chord progression, four major to four minor, very regularly occurs, and that's what's happening right here. So, returns to one. Uh, which is <clears throat> kind of a tricky passage if you're not paying attention and <laughs> so what's happening right there we're in we're back in B flat one one chord uh, and this is, we're going to call it, I'm looking at it right now, so I haven't really thought this through. It's a one over with a five in the bass. Um, and the, the G sort of makes it feel real five-y, but the, the right hand is all one chord. So it has that kind of suspended sound. And da-da, show tunes, show tunes time.
Another show tunes corner. We're, we're in. Um, this is going to be probably going to analyze this as a inverted B flat chord with the D in the bass against a uh, two, a major two. This, this would be in. This would be in harmonic in harmonic to the key uh, C minor, but we're going to the C major, which she's established earlier in the song, so it makes it kind of sound acceptable. But this is the first time we hear this. So that's kind of a wild little splash in the middle of the song, which probably makes it more exciting than it otherwise would be. So here's the beginning of that passage. Okay, now we're gonna do this, which is, we're going back to E7, and then five, seven, She does. And then we're going to hit a, uh, which is the chewiest chord of the song and arguably the climax of the song. And also still leaves us hanging, which is so fun. It's a huge chord, and on a grand piano it sounds huger, is a technical term. And um, but with that five in the bass, the B flat, it uh, makes it still sound like we're not home. It's just like a hammering of a four chord, okay. And that's not really a, f it's super suspended four. It's a four because we're, in, this is E flat. Um, but it's against, it's against a kind of a B flat major seven or a D minor chord, which would be the third. Woo! Uh, with it, except with the G in the bass. So it's an E flat. Seven, nine. It's an E flat nine chord. So let's just do that passage again so you can kind of hear it. Okay. Woo! And then for me, I, I go ahead and hit the root. It's, it's fun, and it also makes up for the absence of a nine-foot Steinway Grand. Um, really makes it sound nice and big. So, okay. This is the uh, other, probably the second hardest part of the song. So we're up here in this big moment. <laughs> So it's another triplets against <clears throat> eighth notes moment. And uh, I'm going to do that again and try to talk about what's happening if it doesn't mess it up even better. So there's a little figure here. And then the right hand's going to go. Do that again. Do that one more time a little slower. Um, <clears throat> I assure you, if you're having a hard time with that moment, I didn't think I would be able to get that. I just played it over and over again, um, and I had I had a metronome set very, very slowly, and I didn't really push it because really, uh, as any accomplished pianist will tell you, some of the hardest moments are so much more about muscle memory, and the more you can get out of your head and stop thinking about it, the better. But it takes you; you have to push through that. Um, it's not something that'll happen immediately unless you're um, exquisitely gifted. For the rest of us mere mortals, you just have to play something slow, and the first the first ten times you're doing it, you're like, well, you hit ten wrong notes, um, but you'll start hitting nine wrong notes, and then eight, and then so on. Right there, see, I had to, th I thought about it, and then I hesitated. You don't want that. So um, you can push past it is what I'm saying. You just got to be patient and also just enjoy yourself. We're playing music here. It's fun. Okay. <clears throat> so. And then we're going to walk down. And so what's happening, the left note is, it stabs throughout. And I listened to Kate's recording of this 
to really get this sense down. So I'm gonna do it a little bit faster so you can hear that. So it kind of tumbles one after the other. Uh, these are in triplets and this is uh, kind of against eighth notes. I don't know, that's, it's four on three in its way. <clears throat> For those who know, no, okay. Uh, we are do 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 do. This is a, a fun moment um, where this note is doesn't really occur in the song any place but this, and it's just it's a passing note, and it's passing note as a five to the passing note of this walking down moment. So um, here we are back again. Oh, it's hard to break this down like. So we're going to land back on a C minor, which is the two, two, three. So that's what's happening right there. So it's going like this. And then there's a quick moment of a G right before you hit this little figure. And that's what uh, happened earlier in the song. Hard blues moment. I'm going to back up a little bit so you can hear it in context. And this part is one, two, three. see that in the sheet music. What's nice about the sheet music is that the the stabs and the triplets and all of that stuff, it's kind of hard to pick out with, um, there's lots of triplets in the song, but it doesn't feel like triplets. You just got to feel it. But what is nice is there's lots of moments where there are just quarter notes and eighth notes. And those are depicted really, really um, clearly. And it helps to anchor the places where all the other notes fall because you're like, okay, one, two, three, and that's what's happening in the left hand right there, uh, which helps anchor an otherwise kind of complicated moment. So you're like going two, three, <laughs> which is crazy right there because this little figure happens, goes, it goes. Uh, it starts right after the downbeat, which is established by that G note. Okay, so. We're moving forward. We're almost done with the song. Uh, so tender. So here we are at the uh, the hard blues little moment. Uh, and then it's going to go. Passage. Do that one more time a little bit cl more cleanly. Do it a little more cleanly than that. Okay, we're uh, back to E4, E flat um, 9. Uh, two. And then there, there's this little moment. to this is a five seven uh, e, f, e uh, an f sorry f7 which is with the little sus but this is what's cool because it's gonna when it when it resolves when that sus resolves we're gonna move up to uh, f sharp diminished seven which pushes to our G minor chord uh, let's make it minor chord uh, <clears throat> minor chord corb doing this little passage here we're establishing a G minor 7 right here and then these are gonna walk in kind of fifths and all over the place and I'll show you what she does so she it's gonna go like this yeah. okay I got a 
went a little farther than I wanted to. So here we go. We're going to go back to this G minor chord. It's going to go do. Shoot way up here. Cool little moment. And then this is pedaling in between just a D note. So I'll do that. Not too hard. And then we're going to switch to an, a C7, um, really with some suspensions, but it's functioning as a C7 chord. So. And then this kind of crazy moment. isn't that hard except that there's kind of a nuts moment happening in the left hand so I'm gonna do that where the left hand is kind of like it's like it remembers oh right hands going and then it's like struggles to catch up and that's what's really happening and it's like throwing you headlong into this kind of deceptive Cajun it lands so hard it's the lowest moment it's the lowest note of the whole piece that happens right before the end of the song. And that, my friends, is some compositional excellence right there. Okay, so we're gonna play it again uh, from that G minor chord in this passage, okay. And then to our C7. And then this is in the right hand. So it's a C minor. C minor, one, uh, or B, B flat major chord, C minor, sorry, and then we're going to stay on that, uh, C minor seven, so, so in the left hand, it happens right after you play the B flat, you're going to play uh, a D, which is... Uh, in B flat, it's the third of B flat, but it's really kind of functioning as a five of G. So we're moving in fifths right here. Oh, so that we're taking leaps uh, in our left hand. It feels it feels wild. It feels like out of control for a second, and then all of a sudden it just sticks the landing. Boom. Okay, so here we are. Uh, and this is uh, that's what she plays, and it's kind of just like. Um, minor seven, a major seven, or sorry, yeah, or a minor second, if you wanted to look at it that way. Most dissonant interval in uh, music. Right now we're landing on uh, C minor seven, which we're sticking with the, the overall chord pattern of the song right here, so um, nothing, nothing to look at here. Okay, so... And then we're floating. I just finally reached the end of the song. It's only a minute and a half long. That's why I'm doing this tutorial because it's actually a piece of music that's doable even though it's challenging for intermediate piano players. Okay, so uh, we're gonna hit that passage again. We're at the C minor seven, we're floating. And then it tumbles down. And then we're doing it in, right, in the right hand. So we're going F7 to a diminished 7. F sharp diminished. F sharp diminished. Uh, hold on a second. I hope that was helpful to you guys to break down again if you have the sheet music um, that'll be that'll get you 60 to 90 percent there and um, it'll also support Kate and um, 
I just want to say thank you to Kate Dunton for making such a beautiful piece of music. I'm um, just a guy. I mostly play guitar and write songs and stuff, but I just was so moved by this. And there's kind of, you know, certain personalities where if you hear something that's just lovely and it seems like maybe something you would accomplish, um, you get obsessed with it. And that's what happened to me last week. So I spent last week doing this instead of other things I should have been doing. Um, but I think there's more than me out there. And so I just wanted to share this with you guys and encourage you to get this thing in your hands. Um, it's really fun to play and it'll move you to your bones. Thanks a lot for watching. Oh, you can watch my performance there, one of these corners. And either way, uh, like and subscribe and I'm gonna keep doing all of this stuff. Okay.